All right, this is a 2008 um, Chevy Express van, 1500 um, with a 4.3 liter V6. And uh, it was a gross vehicle weight, uh, 7200. Okay, um, let me show a quick uh, video on how to do the parking brakes on these. Uh, I replaced the brakes a little while ago. Just some surface rust. This, this vehicle does not get driven. It's not insured or registered yet. Um, but I did put brakes all the way around front and rear. There's probably five miles on these brakes since I've done them about eight months ago. Uh, but when I did them at the time, uh, I, when I pulled the rotors off, all the lining fell off of the parking brakes. So I was like, ah, I'm just going to throw the brakes on for now and I'll worry about it later. And, uh, life happened and, uh, just haven't gotten around to doing it. So now I have uh, a couple minutes to do them. They're very easy to do on these. Uh, so I'm going to try to show it as best as I can without <laughs> so many jump cuts. But on the back here, the way I'm going to do it is, I'm going to put a small pry bar in here. I'm going to push. Uh, I might as well do that right now. Push in here. I'm going to make sure that I'm not pressing against the pad. This is the rotor, and that's part of the caliper. I just want to compress the piston just enough so where it's moving a little. And see, this is, this is a little bit different than what most people might be experiencing because this these are brand new rotors like I said uh, that doesn't have a rust ring on them so you might have to push those back further than anticipated um, but if you're doing the brakes anyway like the, uh, these the service brakes then basically disregard this one step because you're going to be taking the caliper off like normal and you're going to be taking the cradle off like normal and cleaning all that stuff up but all that's been done so all I'm going to do is come back here you got 18 millimeter here and 18 millimeter right here. I'm going to take those both off. So the, the cradle and the caliper together with the brake pads, I'm going to pull off and swing it out of the way. And I'm going to find a, a spot to attach it to. I got these, which I made. They're strong enough. It's just, it's just brake line. And then S, you can buy them uh, if you want to, um, or you can just use some scrap one. It works perfectly fine. I've had these for... 15 years, I don't know, something like that. Um, I'm going to try to set this tripod up here. Hopefully it's not in my way. And it might be a little too, take it back a little. So I already made sure that was loose. I got a breaker bar, you can use whatever you want. There's nothing. You can't figure out how to get this bolt out. You shouldn't do it. I break it free. Got that broken free. And now I have this. And now I'm going to support this while I take this bolt out. You don't want it to drop and pull on the hose and damage the hose. There's the other one. That goes over there. Comes right off. Everything's right in there. I don't even know what you're seeing in there. Come through there. Just find a spot for it. Make sure nothing's bunched up. Make sure you're not hanging on anything important. Come on. I accidentally turned it off. And this, uh, okay. So this is where I have it hanging. See, I'm hanging off of here. I'm not hanging off of this. Or that. Or this. This is part of the hose. It's hanging. Nothing's bunched up. Everything's good. So now at this point, see, like I said, these are brand new brakes. So... You're going to have a different experience. As you can see, the lining in there is brand new. Okay. 
Okay, this side did not fall apart. This side, you can see, the lining came off. Okay, so these are super simple. If you notice right here, uh, it's an eight millimeter. It might be, might be standard. Who knows? But eight millimeter works. Take that off, and it just pulls off. And let me get this set up again. I shut the camera off earlier. Really open and miss anything. So I got, I got you set up there. Millimeter. Now on the opposite side, this adjuster is actually on the bottom, but it's the same exact thing. No need to show both sides. These brakes came with new bolts. Uh, normally I would use them, but uh, I don't like the new bolts. They kind of, uh, let's see if I can find one of the new bolts. Or screws you want, whatever you want to call them. The one on the right uh, seems a little thinner. It kind of just didn't grab anything when I tried it on the other side, so I am reusing these ones. Generally, um, generally I don't reuse hardware, uh, but in this case I have to. So, just give it a little tap and it's loose there. And here's the retainer for it. It does come with a new one. I am going to use the new one. And basically, all you do is give it a little flex. See, look. Give it a little flex, right? Use a pry bar or whatever. Come right in. And then use the new one. First, I'm going to take this out. I want to make sure this is free. Right now, this is locked up. So, I'm going to try to free it up by hand. The other one was the same way. So, I take some vice grips. I'll show you in a second. If I can do it. Come on there, guy. So, I got the vice grips. And I have the teeth. Let's see if you can see that. The teeth, it's not very, focusing very well. But the teeth are only on the gear, or on the splines. This is free. So I have to figure out a way to loosen up. Hit this, loosen up my hand. I lucked out. So, I take this off like I did the other one. Clean it up. And I'll lube it, up, lube it up with some silicone grease. There's not much adjustment needed at all on these. In fact, you could you could just not adjust them at all, leave them all the way in. Now, these are only parking brakes. They're not emergency brakes like a lot of people call them. And I'm using silicone paste, okay? Um, a lot of people use anti-seize. Anti-seize is not a lubricant. Um, I like to use this, and then I'll show you on the back side. I pack it a little bit, keep any moisture out of it. In. Now, if these were service brakes, you would clean up all in here real nice and pretty. Um, I'll clean the other side of this a little bit, but these are only parking brakes. So, I like to put it in and give it like a quarter turn, maybe. All right? And on the back side here, 
I pack grease in there just to keep it's a little bit too much just to keep it from coming out and then I'll put it on right there of the surface that turns at this point I don't need the vice grip anymore so stick it up in there okay you want to make sure that these are vertical and just reverse procedure you just stick it back in now obviously you don't want to go crazy twerking uh, you don't want to go crazy I don't want to get any stuff on the brake lining not that that matters for parking brakes but I will be handling the service brakes soon So you want to put this back on. You don't want to flex it too too crazy. You don't want to break the, the bonding there. Um, these go on either way. There is no front and back, but I'm going to put it to where you can see that. Like that doesn't matter, but I got it there. Give it a little flex. Right there. Boom. All right. And this, you have to push that in. You have to make sure this is vertical on this side, and that's it. Got my new piece of hardware, and on this I will use anti-seize. Now, this kind of serves two purposes. Put a little dab like that on it, so I actually keep it stuck in there. So it's kind of doing two kind of jobs here. I don't use any seeds on brake pads um, or sliders. That's kind of a pet peeve of mine because they are not, it's not a lubricant for stuff like that. Now get it started with your fingers. Like I said, the other ones were basically not catching any threads. I just bumped it. Not catching any threads, so I wasn't happy with that. Well, here's the new one. And this ratchet needs new internals. So, you don't want to Go crazy tightening this. It's, it's not a head bolt or a wheel stud. Now, I'm having trouble catching gears because this, this ratchet is beat up and old. So, it's tight, it's not crazy tight. And just for a little, little tiny little one on them guys there. And try to get it centered. And uh, oops. Just a little bit. I might have to back it or put it back in. You don't really want any drag on this thing. Like I said, you can actually not adjust it. If you want. So that is a little too loose. But I will adjust it a little more. That's pretty close. Three quits. It's too tight. I'm gonna back off one. Oh, still can go more. Let's go four. Nope. Two, three, four. And that's too much. Okay, so we'll go back to still a little 
little bit too much, so we'll go one. Yeah. I've gone a little bit too far there. Just to be sure I'm centered right. You gotta make sure you're centered right in here. That's too tight. I think I was good where I was at. Sure, I'm centered again, which I'm not. dragon good perfect now it's just the reverse take that off again be careful not to drop it because you're some that's some weight here so get your bolts ready make sure you're not twist it Tweak. Okay. Yes, there's a torque spec. I'm not using a torque spec. PFT is good enough. All right. So everything's good. Throw the wheel on, and that's it. No big deal. So I'm gonna have to move this so I can get the heavy tire on. Table. Now I used to use I used to use torque sticks. I don't do that anymore. Give them a couple ugly duggas, and then I use a torque wrench. And then I actually a couple ugly duggas. I put the wheels down on the ground enough to where it's the wheels aren't spinning anymore. No, not not all the weight, and then I torque them, and that's how I do it. So, that. I have to look up the spec, but I think it's I think it's like 120. But that's that's that one. Right now it's in neutral. So, okay. So. 
I'm going to push the parking brake. Oh, there you go. Nice and tight. Theoretically, I could do, I could torque them like that. That's actually what I'm going to do. stop the video because I didn't look up the torque spec and I'm going to do that with the phone. Um, it's a torque wrench. I'm sure there's other videos on how to use a torque wrench. Alright, so I did check it. It's 140 foot-pounds and I will post a picture of the sequence depending on your application, if you have 8-lug, 5-lug, whatever. It tells you the sequence. Basically, this is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. That's how, that's how you do the sequence. So, set my torque wrench. Whoops. To 140. Okay, it's Go give a quick second go around. You see, they're going a little bit, and that's good. Now, with these, this is uh, made in Taiwan, dormant crap, but it was these were $26 each, and the OEM ones are like. 56 inch. I wasn't going to spend that kind of money. I kind of wish these weren't chrome. I wish they were gray. But basically, when you do these, you do them by hand. Okay? You don't use an air gun or a half inch drive, whatever you're using, to tighten these down. Now, you can use a ratchet, you know, just to give it a little so you don't have to wear out your wrists, but it drives me nuts that people use a freaking air gun on these, and it dest destroys the threads on the inside. That's why I had to replace them. Um, and that's it. That's how you replace it. Uh, the other side I have to torque down. Uh, there's no need for me to show you that. And I got to put this back on and drop it down. That's it. And uh, hopefully that helps somebody because uh, these are pretty easy to do. It's actually the first time I've ever done these. But if you know how to use tools, you should be able to figure it out. Now I attached, I put a couple pictures of the parts I used with the part number. Uh, but one thing I wanted to say is... Since you pushed back those pistons, make sure you pump the brakes. Okay, make sure you pump them brakes. Just so you don't message me complaining that I didn't say it in my video. <laughs> I just have to pump and brake. Once you 
I see the car moved a little bit. So now it's got parking brakes. I start it up. Hopefully, I adjusted it right. Yep, foot's off. I'm in reverse. A little squeaky squeaky. There you go. Good enough.